Hello everyone. Today, we're going to demonstrate how to change the read or write address of an object during runtime by using an index register. Let's begin by opening an instance of EasyBuilder Pro. Now, the project on my display has been configured to communicate with a Modbus RTU device. And on our work area, I've placed two numeric objects and three bit lamps that I'm using to display data from specific registers within our program. Now, these objects consume a lot of space in my MT8050IP, which only has a 4.3 inch display. And being that I'll also need a navigation bar, it may seem that the only solution is to reduce the size of the objects on my display. Well, to address this issue, we're actually going to use an index register. An index register will allow us to index the current address by a set number of words defined by the operator. This means that we can remove some of the objects on our display as a single object, when indexed, can display data from several different addresses. To assign an index register to an address within an object, we'll begin by opening the Objects Properties menu. Next, we'll select the Settings button next to the Read slash Write address, and within the center of the following menu, we'll enable the index register. If needed, you can assign different objects to different index registers by using the drop down list on the left side. And although most applications will not require you to index an address past the maximum value of a 16 bit number, for special applications we also have a set of 32 bit index registers. For now, I'll leave my current configuration and click OK to close our object's properties. Now that my numeric object can be indexed, I'll need to assign an index register to my bit object. But before we do this, I'd like to note the following limitation. Although index registers work well for objects with word registers like our numeric object, Boolean objects like our bit lamp will be indexed by a full 16 bits each time you increase the value within the index register by 1. However, this limitation only affects non-tag based PLCs like our Modbus device. To work around this, we'll configure a simple macro that will index and retrieve a value from our 0x register and then set this value within one of our HMI's internal registers. To create this macro, I'll select the Project tab and click Macro. Within our Macro Manager, I'll select New and under Macro Command Main, we'll type the following. Short, followed by a space, and then the word Index to create a short integer variable called index. Next, I'll move to the line below and type bool space bit to declare a boolean variable called bit. Now I'll move our cursor two lines below and select the get slash set function button on the bottom left corner to open our API. Within the API, I'll select PLC from the category dropdown list and I'll leave the function name set to get data. Within the dialog below, let's retrieve our index data from the second index register. To do this, I'll leave our variable set to index and I'll check the system tag checkbox below. Within the address type dropdown list, let's search for and select the address index 1 register and then click OK to close this menu. On the line below, I'll click the get slash set function button again, and using the get data function, we'll retrieve data for our bit variable from 0x to 0 02, and then click OK to insert this function. Now, to index what address our bit variable will represent, we'll need to add the value within our index variable to the current address. 202. With that configured, let's select the get slash set function button once more. And this time we'll use a set data command to set the data within our bit variable into our HMI's LB0 register. And with that complete, I'll enable periodical execution at the top, set the time interval to 100 milliseconds, save and compile our macro, 
and then click Exit to close our macro workspace. Now that we can index the address associated with each object, let's delete our M2 and M3 bitlamps, as well as the numeric object labeled Actual. I'm going to readdress the bitlamp to LB0, and then center these objects within our window. Although there are several different objects that we can use to change the value within each index register, for this demonstration, I'm going to use a multi-state switch, which you can find within the Object tab. A multi-state switch is similar to a word lamp in that it will display the value of the current word register. When the value is zero, it will display the image or label that has been configured to state zero, and when the value is one, the image or label that corresponds to state one, and so forth. What makes the multi-state switch different is that we can use this object like a button to either jog up or jog down to the states that we have configured. The read slash write address of our index register is LW9200. I'll leave the number of states set to 2, change our style to jog plus, and enable cyclical. Within the shape tab, I'll disable use picture, and within the label tab, I'll enable use label, and configure the label of our first state to set point, and the label of our second state to actual. And then I'll change the font size for both to 26. With that configured, I'll click OK to place our multi-state switch, and then we'll copy this object and reconfigure the settings such that the address targets the address index 1 register, which is LW9201. I'll change the number of states to 3 and configure the name of each label to that of each bit lamp. M1, M2, and M3. Now that we have a method with which we can index the address of each object, let's delete the original labels and run an online simulation. With my simulation running, let's use our multi-state switch to index each object, and you'll notice that the value changes depending on the index, and these values correspond with the data in my Modbus device. If you found this tutorial helpful and would like to see more, head on over to our channel to check out the latest technical tutorials. Feel free to check out our website as well for free demo projects, user manuals, and more. Thank you for watching.